What we're doing is we're going to be summarizing 200 square kilometers, 500 years of history, over 5,000 old workings, and over 42 old smelters and refineries that have existed as far back as the uh, conquest by the Spanish. The standard disclosure agreement, you've all seen them. I won't just delay it any longer. What it is, is we are a producer. We've been a producer for thir over 13 years. Uh, we have a medium grade uh, deposit that we've been mining from for the most part. Some are extremely high grade. And the end result is, as Brian said, um, we are a fairly high cost producer. Now that's a sustainable cost producer because we are replacing what we mine plus. We are an under a million ounce producer and we did that very deliberately when the price of silver fell off over the last couple of years. And we focused on drawing from certain mines that have higher margins than others. And these other the mines that we shut down on a temporary basis, we can certainly restart them at any time. And as I mentioned before, the property is fairly, well, is very substantial. We have a lot of work to do ahead of us. And even though we've been in production for about 13 years and a good portion of any free cash flow we get out of that goes back into production, we still have a lot of work ahead of us. We own 100% of 211 square kilometers in Mexico state, southwest of the, the uh, city of Mexico. It's about a two or three and a half hour drive from Mexico City to the mine site. It's all on paved highway. We are well serviced by the local community. And that is we have a social license here. Uh, because as an example, the church in Zequalpan, the closest town, doesn't have a statue of the Madonna. It has a statue of the miner. And people understand mining here, appreciate mining here, and are actively supportive here. Even with the decline in the price of silver over the last few years, we've managed to keep going forward in some of our major exploration directions. Case one, we've identified an open pit, which is now providing ore at about 190 grams a ton over widths of 10, 20 meters. And interestingly enough, it's so friable, we can break it with a backhoe. So we're mining with a backhoe, costs are very low. Another case, we've been chasing a new discovery called Chapinel. The highest grade for the Chapinel uh, in a new district is 97 grams gold and 97 grams silver over a channel sample of 0.8 meters. And finally, we're supported with Samsung, who is buying our feed. And obviously, we're looking to for future participation in our activities. Brian's right, we respond very directly to the price of silver. And in fact, we're leveraged highly to that price of silver. And you can see the dramatic impact that happens. Silver has gone up recently from 17 to roughly $26. Our stock's gone from approximately 30 cents to well over a dollar. We're trading each day at over a million, two million shares on average over the last two weeks. We've got a uh, shares outstanding, about 116 million. We've got about $6 million in the bank. We've got a good following, 70% of that is retail. Now, I have to say, we've recently announced a broker financing read by, led by Red Cloud and supported with Mackey and Canaccord. It was initially for six, it's now for seven. And the broker's option to pick up the balance of another three looks like it's going to be fully fulfilled. And in fact, I think we're oversubscribed at this point in time. We have a reason for doing that. And that is we have a massive property and we've got a lot of work to do in the next two years. We have a team that's done that. Virtually every one of us has had experience, not just in exploration, but also in development in creating mines. Moreover, we've all experienced in public companies and because impact is over 90% silver producer. We're probably somewhat unique as a public company. That silver production is not an equivalent, that's pure silver. And you can see what's happened over the last few years and what we've done in terms of the mining decisions. We've actually cut our production back. 
And logically, people would say we should increase. Well, no, we cut it back. We went to the higher margin areas and are producing for those. And the end result is we produced positive EBITDA over the last year, year and a half, despite the declining price of silver. We do have the capacity and we are intending to reopen some of those lower margin mines and we will be adding to production going forward, courtesy of those. So we have the capacity to increase production almost immediately and future to develop a number of the targets which are fairly advanced or very advanced and need to be produced from. Where are we? We're south and west of Mexico City. We have, as I said, 100% ownership of 211 square kilometers. We have a 99% workforce of Mexicans. So we have no social issues in this area. And on the right-hand side, you'll see sort of a, a, a cartoon, if you will, of the area. Up north, we are producing from a mine, from a mill uh, called the Guadalupe plant. And it runs it right now at about 135, or rather 435 tons per day. It's got a capacity of 535 and with the nominal in uh, input capex, we can take it up to over 600. To the extreme south, we have another one called the Capiri. It's a pilot plant we set up for 200 tons a day. And the narrative on that, I'll bring everybody up to speed on. On what, what we're mining is up north are epithermal veins. And uh, we'll get into detail on that. As we go south, you'll run into an area called Vea de Oro. We'll get into detail on that. As we go very south to where Capiri is, that's a volcanogenic mass of sulfide that we've been working on over a number of years. So servicing the current mill, uh, we're taking it from one mine called Guadalupe. We're taking it from an open pit, Peta Negra, and we're taking it from another mine, San Ramon. And very quick, I'll just detail these ones. They are only some of the number of targets we have. And you can see these are some of the old uh, mills that are in the area. And literally, they go back to 1531 with the uh, Spanish era. What we're getting here with epithermal veins is we're very silver rich at top. And where we say there it runs 150 to 1,000 kilograms. At San Ramon, for instance, we were direct shipping to the smelter with three and 4,000 grams a ton. Guadalupe is somewhere in between. And Guadalupe has its own history. We've got over 80 kilometers of underground workings there as we go forward. A Cuchara, another mine, it's one that's a little lower grade and a little lower in the system. The other thing that's very exciting for us and one we intend to pursue in the immediate future, and we are actually at the moment, is underlying this silver lead zinc horizon and the silver uh, di di disappears as we get down to 300 grams or 300 meters, we get into lead zinc. But underneath that, we've discovered copper gold at depth over 300 meters, substantial grades. And very quickly going through where you see one is our current production, epithermal veins, silver. Over two, is early stage, and although those red lines are supposed to indicate veins, the reason they don't extend over is we simply haven't been in that area. Three is the VMS, and four is the new discoveries of Vea de Oro. Here's a quick picture of the open pit. Say, we gotta be tight for time. Here's San Ramon. You can see at depth, San Ramon is an elephant and has been producing now for 12 years. The interesting one is this one, Guadalupe at the top. It's been in production off and on since 1529. Down below, Alacran has been in production since 1527. And we actually have records where they were producing 30 kilos a ton at the Alacran. We're now mining at Guadalupe, and we soon will be exploring and redeveloping Alacran. There's just a picture of a number of targets on one structure alone. I won't get into them, but one we just drilled uh, two years ago, 834 grams over 3.34 meters. Just typical of what we see here. Um, this is the one out to the east. It's very near Tasco. And again, you can see in the background an old mill and, a, and an old mine, again, Spanish era. This is the VMS we're talking about. It's been pre-stripped 
We've run a bulk sample of 30,000 tons. We've looked at it. We know the metallurgy. Uh, we have a resource on it. That resource is going to be redefined shortly. And the reason it's going to be redefined is what we're doing to enhance the feed. The current mill is capable of 200 tons a day. We are using a thing called DMS, dense media separation, and we've been testing it at the lab. It works exceptionally well. 25% of the sample mass is eliminated with the high grade. 40% of the lower grade is eliminated. That means we can run five, six, 700 tons from the mine and end up and use that 200 ton a day mill at lower cost mining and lower cost milling. That process is going on right now. And the next start will be engineering to design the mill upgrade to put it into production at higher grades and higher tonnages. Bed oral, a massive kilometer and a half by a kilometer and a half uh, buried high mag uh, intrusive. On the north side are gold veins, on the south side, disseminated gold. And this is in a valley. Give you an example Carlos Pacheco, a high grade vein, highest drill hole there was 19.6 grams gold. We mined it as a, a bulk sample, and we were getting an average of 3.2 grams gold, and we were running 0.35 copper. On the south side, Manto America, we took uh, our channel samples, 33 samples ran over 2.0 grams gold, highest value was 19.5 grams over 1.2. Again, an immediate target for what we're gonna do in the near future. Over to the left is another earlier stage target. Back to the other side again, uh, the highest discovery we made at Chapinel so far, 97 grams gold, 97 grams silver, over 0.8 meters. So what are we gonna be doing? We raised the money specifically to accelerate the work. Most of our work to date has been financed through operations. I, if we make a profit in operations, we reinvest it in our property to date. We have a number of drill targets going forward, both at, uh, for the disseminated gold, for the gold targets, for, for uh, Veta Negra. We have a capitalization that we're going to be doing as part of the Capiri open pit, which will bring it back with a larger defined resource, hopefully, uh, along with drilling and with the improved margin. And we're going to continue to identify and evaluate strategic opportunities for acquisitions. And because of the size of the property we've got, we may even joint venture those properties, such as the ones out the extreme east, where we maybe only walked over them for two or three weeks over a 14-year period. So we have immediate expansion in production. We have immediate drill programs. And we have longer-term expansion and with a multi-million target in, in going forward. That's the story of the company. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be here for two hours.